This video is going to be a little different than most of what I've been posting. Today, I'm going to work on fixing the centerboard of this Bauer 12 sailboat. The problem is actually this piece of completely stretched out and spent shock cord. This actually had jammed the centerboard, so it was down just a couple inches, and I couldn't raise it or lower it when I had the boat in the water. Fortunately, I was able to get it up on the beach, and I carry a knife with me, and I actually cut this out and was able to force the centerboard out and then continue to have a day on the water. But uh, this now needs to be replaced. Since I've got to get in here though, it doesn't make sense to just replace the shock cord because the uphaul on the center board is starting to get frayed where it rubs right here uh, through this grommet and through this cam cleat. And while I'm at it, I may as well do the downhaul as well so that everything is new in terms of center board control. As you can see, the deck of the Bauer 12 around the centerboard trunk is completely solid molded fiberglass. There is no access through to get to the top of the board here. I suppose you could cut and put a deck plate in there, but the recommended method is to, to go in from the bottom. The mechanism with the board is actually uh, screwed into the bottom of the hull and can drop right out the bottom of the boat. In terms of replacement lines, we have five and a half feet of a quarter inch line. That's the uphaul. We have three and a half feet of quarter inch line. That is the downhaul for the centerboard. And then we have three and a half feet of shot cord, which actually I couldn't get shot cord. This is five sixteenths. They didn't have it on the roll at the store, so I bought a four foot bungee. I'll just cut it down to length. Other than that, you just need some hog rings to be able to crimp that bungee together and some 3M5200 for around the screws to reseal and re-bed them when you put that plate back in under the boat and some tape so that you can connect the lines together and basically pull the old one out through the bottom and have the new one feed itself right in. The instructions on how to rework the centerboard suggest having one or two people to help you because the boat needs to get rolled over on its side. I'm going to see if there's a different way to do that myself. So do you think you can help me with the sailboat center board today? I thought so. Now that the boat's on the ground, the next step is to take these new lines and connect them end to end with the old lines with tape. That way, when the old gets pulled through, the new one goes right with it. I undid the stopper knots on the end of these lines 
earlier. Next, we need to roll the boat up onto its side. And this is actually tricky to do for this boat because it's got a six foot beam and the round bilge means that as soon as you roll it up to the side, it just wants to roll back down. So I'm probably going to have to tie off and pull to the tractor and then once it's up, lean it against the tractor bucket. We'll see how this goes. to take any chance of losing this while I'm working under here so put in a couple blocks under the keel because I got to take that plate out there and I tied it off to the tractor so next it's time to take out that plate just a bunch of screws here to take out So this is what it looks like inside here. This is the up haul. This is the down haul. And then through here is where that shock cord is supposed to go. And that loops back to this eye bolt right here. So you can see I had cut this off because it was already failed. And I didn't cut it off inside. I think this was right out the trunk and I just cut off the two ends. But that piece remained in there. You can see we've got some sand and some grit that's accumulated in here from beaching the boat. And as we look up into the trunk, there's some sand in there as well. These were all bedded, so some of this was still adhering just a little bit around those screws. but. I'm going to clean some of the big sand out of here and then see about pulling the lines through. Remember, I taped those on the other side, so if I pull through, I should be able to get them down here and then ultimately tie them into the board with nice stopper knots. So very simple at the bottom of the centerboard it's just a overhand stopper knot and I've got an overhand stopper knot on the boat side as well to prevent it from slipping down through so you can see this is the up haul that is the down haul over there and you can see this watermark here this boat actually lived in the water in salt water full time for three seasons and that's why we see that watermark there. I think that's also a big reason why the shock cord was so degraded. If this didn't live in the water all the time, I don't think things would be nearly so bad. There is one issue here, and I've actually been aware of it for several years, actually, um, I think after the first season with the boat. I thought there was just no screw here. <clears throat> it turns out the head is broken off. Now the reason that there are four here close together is because that is right by the hinge pin here for the center board. So there's a lot more force and stresses coming into the hull 
at this point than over the rest of the length of this. This piece is just fiberglass. I kind of wish it was a piece of stainless steel that was holding this. I don't know if they've changed that since. This boat was built in 2009. This is the first time I've been into this uh, in all the usage that it's seen. So it's held up pretty well, but that fiberglass piece, not necessarily the strongest. I'm gonna see if I can grab the end of that screw with some pliers and twist it out so I can put a new one in there. Then I'm gonna go ahead and run this shock cord and work on getting this put back together in the boat. So here's how it's supposed to look. What the shock cord does by pulling there based on where the pivot is, it actually puts pressure on the centerboard to keep it down uh, in the down position. So this is just a piece of starboard, which is a plastic polymer material. It's not all that heavy. So having that uh, shock cord there just helps hold that down. You lift to raise the board there and then you can pull it down with the downhaul there. I've never really needed to use that until this shock cord failed. Otherwise, this pulls that board down. And then if you happen to hit anything on the bottom, the board will kick up and then come right back down if you're in shallow water. What I did is pull up the line there pretty much as far as it can go so everything's tight i don't want anything jamming up in the trunk as i put this back in i will show you that when i did the hog rings i used a pair of fencing pliers for that and in order to do it with one person i actually pulled this tight and clamped it with vice grips and i actually put two hog rings on there just for good measure so hopefully that will hold up well. I may adjust the position of where that is just so it doesn't come in contact with the board. I think I'll actually do that now and then I'll go ahead and get this unit back up in the boat. Got the 5200 on here already but i just wanted to show a little closer you can kind of see this the cracks in this from from stress and this is why i wish that this were stainless steel instead of this fiberglass piece just because there is a lot of stress here and so you know that cracking does make me a little bit nervous particularly in and around here but this boat has been used hard. It's been sailed in a lot of shallow water where this board would hit and kick up. And so it's not necessarily surprising to see that this boat was also used a lot. Like I said, it was in the water three years, in the salt water, all season long, sailed every week pretty extensively. So given that, I'd say it's held up fairly well. Let me just demonstrate how effective that shock cord is. I'll release the cam cleat over on the centerboard trunk and that board should pop right out. So let me go do that and then I'll haul it back in and you'll see how well it works. So it takes no effort to let that down. You just release that cleat and it uh, jumps right on down. So. This really is a great boat. It's held up very, very well. I've enjoyed it a lot. Now let's go ahead and get this thing back on its bottom 
and back on that trailer. That was a success. A little harder than I hoped with getting it off the trailer and then back onto the trailer, but I was able to do it by myself. It definitely would have been easier to do the whole process, including rolling the boat up with a second person and using the mast as a lever to tip the boat over, which is exactly what the instructions suggest. However, they also suggest that the person holding the mast needs to hold it the whole time that the work on the centerboard is being done. I think that having it blocked up and tied to the tractor was better because it gave me time to work without worrying about someone else holding on to the mast and keeping the boat stable the whole time. So all in all, not bad. Not something I would want to do all the time, but an easy DIY project for this particular sailboat.